When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor. Every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Cause it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. It. Cause it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. All about you.
the song we just played is uh, so familiar, huh? but uh, did you all know huh? the fellow who wrote the song is the same person who wrote the more famous song, 10,000 Reasons? Huh? Uh, Matt Redman, uh, I think uh, if ever anybody understood uh, worship and the heart of God, uh, Matt Redman has a glimpse of it. So uh, you all my guests, today we are going to continue huh, on uh, this topic of uh, worship. Uh, this is in our BWJ and I uh, trust uh, even along the week as we continue to read, as we share with each other, it will not just uh, become a topic of head knowledge. Uh, huh? We all know worship is something we need to engage in. So even as we I uh, reflect on uh, worship, one book that I read years ago came to mind. You know, sometimes when we read a book, huh, there are some people who mati mati, they must read two times. Huh, or if it's really good, three times. I'm not in that group. Huh, but this was one book I read twice, really, you know, cover to cover. Can you all see it? Okay. Huh? Rick Warren's uh, Purpose Driven Life. And in that book, he shares quite a bit uh, about worship and in uh, one of the chapters uh, he very aptly and very simply uh, puts it as worship that pleases God. I think worship, not just Christians worship, uh, people of other uh, religions and faiths will also engage in worship. Uh, who are they worshipping? And if they are worshipping, is it to our God? And more importantly, does it please God? So just now in that song, Heart of Worship, uh, uh, the first few lines say, something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. We are telling God, you know, uh, we are praying that our worship is something that's of worth, something of value, and it must bless his heart, make his heart happy, make pleases him. So, uh, I will extract just four very important points from that book and we run through it quickly. More important, if uh, you have time, you all got time, go and dig up this book lah, to read. If not, Pastor will lend it to you all five dollars one time. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I will share with you very quickly four points from this book uh, and then later we will sum up a few other practical points. Huh? So, the first thing is, God is pleased when our worship is accurate. Very often we don't think uh, of uh, wanting to give worship that is accurate, but we have this tendency, uh, human nature, we try to fit God into our opinion of Him. I like to think of God as a Santa Claus, as a Father. I like to think of God as somebody who is not worried whether I'm right. But no, no, it must be based on the truth of Scripture. Because what? True worshippers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yesterday we said Amen. that. Huh? And, uh, so it is so important. Huh? God will be pleased when our worship is accurate. God is pleased when our worship is authentic. Huh? Uh, I think we all know when we come before God, everything is stripped the way it has to be authentic. Huh? And we are told over and over again in the Bible, we have to love God with all our heart, our mind, our soul. And then... It means that worship must be genuine. Lah. It has to be heartfelt. And Rick Warren says, at uh, the bottom right, you can see, God-pleasing worship, that's what you want. Huh? Not just any worship. God-pleasing worship is deeply emotional. It is deeply doctrinal. Uh, we have to make sure we know uh, uh, God's word. We must use both our hearts and our heads. I think it was Philip Lin who says, uh, there are three W's in our life. Lah. Worship, walk, and works. Our worship must be authentic. A. Our walk must be laced with brokenness, humility. B. Yeah? And our works, we have to work hard. Huh? God's kingdom has to be courageous. A, B, C, W, W, W. Huh? So remember that. God is pleased when our worship is thoughtful. We have to love God with all our mind. Uh, sometimes we fall into this habit of we repeatedly say, praise God, praise God, praise God, and we fall into this mode now of not really understanding already or it becomes vain repetitions. We have to be careful of that. Uh. And we need to, from time to time, uh, 
train ourselves, our utterances, to use other words. Lah. Huh? Thank you, God. You are so good. You are so awesome. And uh, praising God is nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we need to have thoughtful worship and God is pleased when that happens. Uh. And the fourth point is God is pleased when our worship is practical. Today's uh, bit of juice is, uh, Paul says, offer your bodies, we all know that, as living sacrifices. Not just living, it has to be holy, set apart, and it must be pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Huh? We know huh, in our Old Testament times, Old Covenant, sacrifices were given, but they were dead sacrifices. Huh? We today are called to be living sacrifices. Huh? And one of the things to be a living sacrifice, we choose sometimes a worship that is convenient, that is comfortable. We have to be careful. Huh? It involves work, it has to be practical because we want to be a living sacrifice and that act of worship is pleasing. So yesterday, during the sort of icebreaker, huh, Pastor was asking, you know, what comes to mind when uh, we have a uh, worship? Uh, so a lot of people uh, say many things and it shows uh, very good. Uh, most of you know it. And these four important questions are when, what, why, and how. Uh, when is... Somebody said, I think not one person, more than one, it is a lifestyle. That means what? It's not only a Sunday activity. Yeah? Every moment, if we can, it is a lifestyle. So that's when. Huh? And what is it? It's a living sacrifice. Huh? It is an act that is pleasing to God. Huh? An act that revolves work. And why? Because it's a command. And because it pleases God. And today, this will be a manual. Huh? How then to conduct worship that is pleasing to God? We have 10 points. You probably will have more. But just very quickly, uh, we know the thing that comes to mind when we say worship is music. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but remember Matt Renman said that all is stripped away. Can we still worship or not? Uh, we have to. And in many sense, the MCA is so good. MCO is so good. Uh, we have an idea of when we have only the bare essentials, when we have only two or three people, or when there's only you alone, will you still be able to worship? Huh? And we will say, yes. Music is an avenue. It helps us. It enhances the worship. But we need to be able to worship still when the music is just bare minimum or even without music. Huh? Psalms, for example, you can read more than 100 references, you know, to singing, to music. But without the music, even as you read it, it is a form of worship. Uh, and then worship to prayer, number two. Uh, praying the scriptures we know uh, is saying, God, you wrote this. Uh, I'm praying it. Please let it come to pass. Uh. Uh, so again, Psalms is a good prayer book. We read that uh, last week uh, when we were doing prayer. And just like any father, he delights to hear us pray. Uh. Uh, and he gives it even greater delight when he answers our prayers in the timing, in the mode, in the way he will choose to answer. Uh, and he delights in blessing us even as our worship will bless him. So, sometimes when it is so hard to worship, start with prayer. Point number three, praise and thanksgiving. And these two always go together. Lah. And you know in scripture, there are more than 200 verses no talking about praise. And 250 verses. Lah. And 150 in Psalms alone. Praise is just simply lah, telling God how great He is. Praise Him for His love, for His forgiveness, His patience, His creation, His gifts, everything, anything. Thanksgiving, similarly, is praising Him for what He has done for us, what who he is and to learn to give thanks in all circumstances and when that becomes your worship it will please God and then number four worship through confession of sin this is so important we all know sin breaks the heart of our father he weeps to see his children make wrong choices so even as we come before him we have to ask and plead for the blood of Jesus to acknowledge in our own strength we are never righteous. But 
through grace and through the blood of Jesus, through the confession of our sins, we are made righteous. And then last week we learned the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It has power uh, and it has meaning. So, when we worship through confession of sin, God is pleased. Uh, and then, number five, worship through the word. Here, uh, confession, then there's word. Uh, I missed out, sorry. <laughs> uh, worship through the word. We need to spend time, and the MCO, all of us know, we are really appreciating the time we spend reading, reading the word. And each time we read, now we must worship. Uh, praise God. Thank Him. Uh, and personalize it. Then, we are worshipping through God. Then, we are pleasing God. And then, worship through listening. Uh, uh, we have music, we have praise, we have thanksgiving, we have confession. We are speaking to God. But now, we have to learn, and this is difficult part uh, for many of us. Uh, we just like to talk, we don't like to listen. Uh. We need to speak, and then we have to listen. And MCO gives us lots of time, you know. Huh? You can hide yourself away, spend time in solitude. And all of us know, uh, silence is lost. In today's culture, even when people are alone, there will always be the earbuds, earphone, even they are jogging. Huh? And learn to fall into this worship mode of listening to God. Huh? And then number seven, worship through giving. You know, SSMC is one of the churches that talks very little about giving. Maybe once a year huh, during anniversary, huh? give day and we want to thank God uh, for the most part of our congregation uh, that people give. They give with understanding. They give generously. Generously, When we are give, worshipping God through giving, uh, what we are actually saying to God is, all I have is yours. Do what you want with it. Make me a good steward. All of us know God does not need our money. He needs our heart. And giving is worshipping through such a great privilege. There are people who are not believers, but they have a generous heart. They want to give, but they are fearful. They don't know who to give. They don't know what to give. And they are afraid what they give might be used. But we thank God we can worship through giving, knowing that because Jesus taught us to give. He gave his life. That is the best example. And number eight, worship through serving. You can serve others, you can serve individually, you can serve as a family, you can serve people who are not even believers. And why? Because Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. What a great example. Uh, and if you read through the Bible, there's always this word, one another, one another. Uh, it says, to live out that life of serving one another. And number nine, serving, worshipping God through nature. Worship God to spend time. I know we don't have time to look at nature, but most places where you are, regardless of apartment, or if you look out through a window or you're in the garden, you will be able to see God's creation. We are seeing more and more pictures of sunrises, sunsets, rainbows in Facebook and other uh, media postings. People are beginning to appreciate nature because the pause button has been pressed. Uh, similarly, each time we look at nature, surely we can worship, worship God. And finally, all of us know that uh, in our daily life, because you say it's a lifestyle, uh, uh, but to say 24 hours you are in mode of worship, I think it's really very difficult. Huh? Sometimes certain things really pull us away. But through small portions of your daily life, we can do that. Huh? Each time, regardless where you are, what you are doing, if we learn to create that sense of God consciousness, we are worshiping God through our daily life. Huh? And this surely pleases God. Huh? So, I want to recap in conclusion uh, the chorus of uh, the song Heart of Worship. I'll bring you more than a song. Well, song itself is not one you require. God searches much deeper within. 
through the things, through the way things appear. He is looking into our heart. And Rick Warren sums it up very clearly. The, the heart of the matter is actually a matter of the heart. So even as we go through this weekly, this whole week of worship, let's examine our heart. Give it to the Lord in worship and it will please Him. Amen.